so I don't forget. Now, can everybody see and hear me okay? If you don't mind just letting me know. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So nice to see you guys. Let's see. Yes, we're, it's not quite 1030, so we won't get started yet, I promise. I just wanted to hop in just to make sure that everything was working okay. I'll be sharing my screen very soon. Hi, Mackenzie, how's it going? I know a lot of you guys are taking the board exam tomorrow. Good luck before I forget to mention something. Yes, it's early for a lot of you. Thank you guys for hopping on early. It's always tricky with the different time zones because it's either too late, too early. If it's in the middle of the day for some people, that just doesn't work for some people. So it's always kind of tricky. So sorry about that. But um, for those of you who are watching the recording afterwards, just remember if you can't attend the live sessions, that is understandable. Just make sure to watch um, the recording afterwards because these will really help you guys kind of tune into everything um, and know a little bit more every time for the board exam. You know, there's nothing like listening to a video. Um, it's just better than just trying to read the material on your own, trying to go through things on your own. It just kind of helps to put everything together, especially today. We're talking about the new AAP classification system. Um, Mackenzie, we were actually talking the other day. I still have not gotten an email back, um, but what I've done is I did ask some of my colleagues um, not to be annoying, but everybody gave me different answers. So everybody, I'll, qu I'll, um, I'll quickly mention what I was talking about with another student here. And hey, maybe some of you guys um, have something to say about this, but for the new AAP classification system, I'll, I'm not confused about it, but there's a couple different things that I'm hearing that I don't know which way to go about it. And that is, and I mean, I'll talk about that today. We're going through case studies, but just a quick mention is, you know, if somebody has one tooth that puts them in stage three, but everything else is a generalized stage two, do you go up to that stage three? Yes or no, what do you do? So that's just kind of where there is still some slight confusion on that. I was talking to my colleagues and again, we will be going through this. This is just a very informal chat right now, but um, I was talking to my colleagues and they just pretty much say that, well, you would just simply word it differently. Oh, um, and you guys hold that thought. Um, and Mackenzie, I did ask about, you were talking about you can't go, once you establish a grade for a patient, you can't go down that grade, but you can go up. So you wouldn't say to a patient, they're a grade, you know, they're the highest one. And then six months later, things are healthy again. So now they're a grade A, you know, you wouldn't do that. Um, sorry, guys, let me just in case you guys are, let me kind of put up a slide at least as we're having this informal conversation. There we go. Um, and don't worry, we will be going through all of this. Okay, I'm looking for the grade A. There we go. <laughs> so um, Mackenzie, and I think I was actually talking to a few of you guys about this too. Uh, oh, you guys can't see my screen yet anyway, doesn't matter. There we go. So um, you can't move down in a grade, meaning if you if you have established grade C for a patient two years later, they wouldn't be a grade A. That is correct. So I might have said something different in our last session. I'm sorry, I don't remember, but that has been clarified. Again, you guys, this is just an informal chat right now. We will be going through things. Um, I'm going to make my chat box bigger because some of the text isn't showing up. Yes, um, Stephanie, I have been hearing so many different answers and it's frustrating because, you know, it is, it's not so bad for, for the real world because it's not like we're going to fail if we say something wrong in our charting. But for the board exam, you guys need to know what the right answer is. Um, but I'm not going to lie to you and say this is the right way to do things when I personally don't know either. So, but um, I know that's, that's, that's not helpful, but I'm just being honest. I did send emails. I have made phone calls to the major associations and the board exam committee, but nobody has gotten back to me yet. So I do not know, but I'm going to help you guys today, even like just to kind of go through everything. So at least you will have a good idea. Okay. Um, 
if that helps. But yes, we will go through all of that. Um, yes, and Stephanie, that is correct. So you would always go to the worst case scenario because um, um, Stephanie makes a good point because you can't grow the bone back. So it's not like somebody would have nine millimeter pockets and then have three millimeter pockets, you know? So you would always go for the worst case scenario, even if it's just that one tooth. But to my understanding, there's a way you would write that in the chart. So localized and generalized. And that's what we will talk about today. Um, oh, uh, Mackenzie, thank you. So uh, Mackenzie was saying that when she took the practice exams, um, they would have the case studies and she would go with the highest area of the clinical attachment loss and she would get the answer right. So yes, um, thank you, Mackenzie. That is actually very, very helpful. That's what I suggest everybody do then. So go with the area of the highest clinical attachment loss and um, that's the best way to do things. But again, I do have some case studies for you guys. I'm actually going to go back from our, our last PowerPoint. Um, I have the case studies towards the end, but just to do a quick review, because I do see a lot of new students, and if I don't do the review, it will be even more confusing. So, um, and feel free, you guys, for those of you guys who are new, feel free to ask questions anytime. So I can't see or hear anybody else. I do that on purpose because if I allowed everybody to be seen and heard, then um, the internet would be slow. It would probably be choppy. So I find that this is just easier, but feel free to ask me questions anytime. Um, there is a chat box that you should be able to see and open up. When you guys send a message in the chat box, I'm the only one who can see it. So I, if you have a question, I will likely, you know, read out the question so that the other students can hear it. But I just do that so it's not too um, distracting. But if you send me a message and you would prefer I don't read it out loud or something, then just sort of make a note um, when you send me the message. But I don't really see that happening because we're all working together, right? So today it's 1030, right? Good. Okay. So today we're talking about the new AAP perio classification system. Um, there are some courses online you can take that are free. Check them out for sure. Even for myself, this is something new for me to learn, or I should say it has been new. So I have been taking courses and listening to them over and over again. And I find I learn something new every single time. So for the board exam, I'm going to give you guys kind of a nutshell on this new system, okay? Um, you guys do have this PowerPoint um, uploaded inside your course under Perio. If you're in the board exam prep academy, the full course, that would just be at the end of your course, like the end of the modules where I upload all of the new PowerPoints, all of the new sessions, okay? Um, these are great charts, print them out. That's what I do, even for my own practice, I have to constantly be looking at these charts. I look at the staging and I look at the grading because you need to determine that. Um, for the board exam, so we're talking about the board exam here. The main thing you guys have to know truthfully is, you will look at clinical attachment loss, not just pocket depth. Whereas the old system, hey, I have been through a few offices where I will go back to look at the chart and clinical attachment loss was never recorded, meaning they have never charted the gingival recession. If you don't do that, you can't get a proper um, determination on the patient's oral health. You just can't do it. So I like this new system because it is all about the clinical attachment loss. If there's anybody here who doesn't understand clinical attachment loss, let me know, but I will be talking about that a little bit as well. So I'm just going to go through the first slides quickly because we did do a video on this actually twice, but I still feel like it's good to review. Okay. If I move too fast or too slow, you guys let me know. So everybody can see my, my um, screen okay. Everybody can hear me. If you can't, please let me know. Um, I'm assuming if you couldn't hear me, you would be typing something by now. So that's good. <laughs> okay, so basically you guys, as I said before, know this new system. It is divided into staging and then you have to pick either a grade A, B or C but there's also modifiers that you guys have to know. Is the patient a smoker? 
is the patient a diabetic? Because if a patient is smoking a pack a day, all day, every day, um, that will determine how you feel their perio is going to progress. So that's where the grade A, B, and C come in, okay? So you guys have this PowerPoint. I'm not going to read out everything to you, but feel free to read it, of course, on your own. I'm pretty much saying what's on this slide anyway, but just in a different way, okay? So staging and grading. Okay, next one. And this new system looks at implants and the um, gingival health around implants. So for those of you who do not know, or you perhaps forgot, the gingiva around implants can get, can get gingivitis very, very quickly. Um, and I should say you can get like perio around implants quickly because there's not that natural um, ligaments attaching everything because yes, it's the most like your natural tooth, but it's not your natural tooth. So any, any disease that happens around the implant can happen very, very quickly. So we need to make note of that and we need to nip that in the bud as quickly as possible. So that's another thing that I feel that the new system really looks at, which is excellent. Um, the steps. Okay, so I have the steps in a chart form, but then I have also taken this from um, todaysrdh.com. They are excellent with just sort of providing those addi um, additional resources, okay? So step one, you are, I'm um, sorry. So you basically want to determine, okay, does the patient have perio or not? If they do, is it mild, moderate, is it severe? So then you would know how to put them into stages. Um, I'll show you again on the chart, but stage one and stage two is pretty much on one side of the spectrum and stage three and stage four is another side. So you kind of go, okay, does the patient have four millimeter pockets? Does, does the patient have five millimeter pockets or does the patient have six, seven, eight millimeter pockets? That would be severe. So I will show you guys that later, um, as I just sort of said in step two here. Um, but as I said, again, you guys, it's more than just the pockets. You need to calculate pockets, but then chart every tooth, their gingival recession. That is so important. You cannot, so, you know, kind of a good question on the board exam might be, um, um, would be if you don't chart gingival recession, can you do this perio classification? Well, no, you have to do that. If a tooth doesn't have any gingival recession, awesome, then you would just look at the pocket depth because the, uh, the gingival recession isn't there. Uh, Mackenzie, yes. So you guys, if you are a CDHA member, they do take students at a reduced fee. So hope, um, if you're obviously um, in Canada here, but um, if you are a CDHA member, they have a great webinar. Uh, oh, and it's free. Okay, sorry, um, even better. Um, I, I think I had to pay when I was a student. Oh, no, I didn't. I think it was free. But anyways, um, I actually saw the webinar twice yesterday, Mackenzie, to just sort of refresh my memory. It was very, very good. Very, very good. So everybody should check that out. In fact, I'll give you guys the link for that later. Um, of course, you have to be a member to watch it, but it is a good, um, a good um, webinar. There's parts one and parts two. You have to take quizzes to go to the second part, but it's really, really good. Um, and then you guys, after you establish a stage, so think about it easy like this. Try not to make it complicated. Um, you would establish a stage right away. So does the patient have mild, moderate, or severe perio? How do you know that? By calculating the clinical attachment loss can also be called clinical attachment level. So C-A-L, Cal. Okay, so you would first establish that. And then you would say, okay, so let's look at the other factors. Does the patient smoke a pack a day? Are we worried about this perio getting really bad really fast? Are they 14 years old and have five millimeter pockets? You know, so that would establish a grade. Are they 95 years old and have four millimeter pockets? We won't be as concerned when a 95 year old has pockets, then we would be a 14 year old because that 90 year old has probably had those for who knows, 
you know, 70 years. But that 14 year old, okay, when did they get those pockets? So that would determine the grade. So I go through that in some case studies for you guys in a little bit. So I just kind of put the chart here in a different like way to look at it. Stage one and stage two, you guys remember, um, sorry if I sound like a broken record here, but you're looking at the cowl, not the pockets at the site of the greatest loss, okay? So you're looking at Cal. Um, oh, I should mention, um, when you guys are probing, when you guys are doing all of this, um, it is like six sites, you know, which you guys should know, but just in case they happen to ask that on the board exam. So you look at the greatest loss, okay? This is Cal here. So one to two millimeters of Cal, three to four um, millimeters Cal. So this is Cal, not pocket depth. Okay, is it greater than five, so on and so forth. Okay, but also look at, which again, you guys, we do talk about, but I'm just sort of doing a quick review. Um, look at the bone loss, definitely look at the bone loss and the age. So when I took the CDHA webinar yesterday, like I reviewed it, I took it again, or um, I took it a couple of weeks ago, but I wanted to kind of review everything. Um, they, they really talk about age, you know, look at the age of the patient and the bone loss. Kind of when I said, if a 90 year old has bone loss, we're not going to be as concerned than if a 14 year old does. Because for that 90 year old, hey, it makes sense. They have lived their life. They're, they are doing a great job. Um, it doesn't matter when they got the bone loss, but that's kind of a better prognosis than a 14 year old. Okay, because that's not normal for a 14 year old, let's say, to have moderate bone loss, but we do talk about it. Um, and then they want you to look at, of course, have they lost any teeth? We're not talking about teeth because they had teeth taken out for orthodontics or teeth taken out because they have wisdom teeth. No. So that could be a question on the board exam. Do the fact that they don't have their wisdom teeth, does that matter with tooth loss? No, it's tooth loss due to perio. So due to a tooth being lost because it was so loose, they had to take it out. Does that make sense? Please stop me if something doesn't make sense, you guys, because I, I, I am kind of going through this quickly because it's more of a review. But then, of course, look at the probing depths also, which would help you to determine Cal. But they do talk about probing depths. They talk about furcation involvement. Another thing to note. If, if a tooth has furcation involvement, that puts them in stage three, you guys. They would not be a stage one or a stage two because it's not normal for people to have furcations. Something's going on, the tooth isn't healthy. Now for generalized or localized, that's the same. If it's 30%, that's localized. If it's more than 30%, it is generalized, okay? Um, and quickly again, looking at the grading. So they like you again to look at the age of the patient um, and to determine the bone loss, that type of thing. Thankfully in the CDHA webinar, which I have always thought, but they did mention, we won't have time to take out a calculator and do calculations. On the board exam, they may ask you to do that. Mackenzie, I think you said you had to do that or somebody was telling me they had to do that, you guys, it's ridiculous. But, oh no, okay, good. Then somebody was telling me, I'm trying to think somebody did have to do it but maybe it was a different type of exam i'll double check oh good so so um mackenzie is saying that they give you the bone loss and the age okay perfect that's nice because that's just what you need to kind of calculate those numbers that's a key determining factor even if you guys don't remember anything else look at the bone loss and pick which um grade they should be in okay honestly um, but hopefully you'll remember the other stuff too, okay? <laughs> um, and then the modifiers, the risk factors. So smoking and diabetes, okay? That is definitely it. Um, this is just the charts that I put in a link form for you guys to download if you wanted to. Just another look at those charts, um, the same charts. Remember how I said to determine a stage, you know, keep it simple. First look at, okay, is it, is it going to be mild or moderate perio or is it going to be severe perio? Down here, again, um, this will just kind of help you guys go through the different stages to know what to do. 
I like this. It is on that website link that I have given you here. If you guys want to print that out, it's just helpful to kind of go through the steps. You do get used to it after some time. Your first few times kind of thinking of case studies and going through all of this, you will be very confused. Okay, you will be very confused, but it takes practice like with anything. It takes practice and it will get better. Um, so the mild to moderate perio is typically stage one or stage two. So, so severe perio can lead to the stage three and stage four. And then you have to say, okay, well, how severe is it? So mild to moderate stage one or two. Um, this is just kind of a different way to look at things. Um, they are just kind of showing you guys. So if you're trying to determine, okay, is the patient healthy or not? look at the basic things like is the gingiva red is it pink is the papilla swollen are the margins puffy um is there you know like overgrown gingiva look at that this is healthy so this is a good example of a healthy patient okay yes technically you guys i might see some gingival recession here actually no sorry i see a lot of gingival recession but we're looking at the gums primarily. Yes, there is gingival recession, but they likely don't even have a pocket there. But this looks like the gingival recession of three or four of those. So that, autom so, that, so that automatically puts them into a cal of three or four, even if technically there's no pocket or something. But you can't really have a zero pocket, can you? So let's just say that this patient had a pocket of like two here and a gingival recession of a three. So that's three plus two is five. So that puts them at a cal of five. This patient looks pretty healthy. So for me to kind of say, okay, you guys, there's a cal of five here. Are we gonna put them in stage three? I mean, come on, give me a break. But it will depend on if, if all of the teeth are like that, yes or no. Um, but what they want you to do is to put that patient in a stage three because that's what their cal is. But then bone loss, you would have to calculate the bone loss. Have they lost any teeth? Well, no, there's no tooth loss because it, it looks like that person had all of their teeth, right? So then they're now stage one or two. So then you kind of have to determine, okay, what's going on here? Um, good question. So with the new AAP, if the case study says a cal of three or four, um, so here you guys, would you automatically refer them because that puts them in stage two? Yes, you would. In the real world, we would not because that would be very easy to clean the teeth, no big deal. But the board exam wants you to know with moderate perio, you do refer them. So Mackenzie, that's a great question. As silly as that might sound to refer somebody, but you would, okay? Yes, I don't agree with it. But the new system, yes, moderate perio automatically means to refer them. Obviously, if they're severe perio, you would definitely refer them, same type of thing. Um, and these are just sort of, you need to know the three distinct forms. So there's periodontitis, um, we used to call it um, aggressive and chronic, but then you would also have necrotizing periodontitis um, and then peri uh, periodontitis as a manifestation of systemic conditions. So think if a patient's pregnant, if, oh goodness, why can't I think, if they're on a medication that's causing their gingival overgrowth, perhaps, that kind of thing. Okay, so this is calculating Cal. So remember, you take the probing depth plus recession, okay? Plus re um, recession. If the gingival margin is, 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 is above that CEJ, I couldn't think of the word, is above that CEJ, then that's almost like a minus number, okay? Because um, you, you need to determine kind of that length, okay? So if the pocket depth is six, like look at the middle one here. You don't see any gingival recession here. If the pocket depth is six, then that makes Cal six. So who knows? They might try to be confusing for you and ask you a question on the board exam, such as if a pocket is six millimeters and there's no gingival recession, what is the clinical attachment loss? Well, it would be six. It would be the number of that pocket. So does that make sense to everybody here? Just making sure. 
just making sure. Um, just going through the different like implant cases again, you guys. Um, they want you to take x-rays on implants, not, you know, every six months or something, but consistently like, like every year, every two years, just to really determine how the health of that implant is. Um, just like a quick little side note there. Um, staging. So I like this slide because it kind of brings it all together, doesn't it? So stage one, two, three, and four. This is a great slide. Even if you guys just want to take a picture of this slide now, um, with your phone, um, that can just sort of help you as you're going through things to just sort of go, okay, well, let's kind of practice. Practice makes perfect. Let's determine what stage this patient could be in. Okay, so just sort of a little side note there. I like this slide. Um, and then how they kind of calculate the bone loss, you guys. So I like that. So um, Mackenzie was saying on the board exam, they will give you um, the bone loss percentage and the age, right? Awesome. So then it just shows you right now how to calculate that. In the real world, what we would do is just sort of look at the x-ray and kind of do like a little, okay, well, if if the bone level's here, well, that's pretty darn good. If the bone level's here, okay, that's 35% bone loss. If the bone loss is, if that like level's here, then that would be 70%. You know, don't put lines, of course, on the x-ray or like, you know, these lines won't be there. Oh, they give you the actual number, Mackenzie. Oh, thank you. That's good to know. Cool. Well, I guess that might be confusing for some people though. I wish they would just not ask you guys those questions, but I get it. Um, so like on, on an x-ray, like we would just kind of look at it, but it sounds like on the board exam, they give you the actual number to help you calculate it, which is really nice. So just simply doing those calculations will give you, well, is it grade A, B or C? So that's kind of nice. And always look at the, the risk factors, which we talk about in the case studies. Are they a smoker? Are they a non-smoker? Do they, do they smoke a lot, a lot? <laughs> you know, do they just kind of smoke a little bit a lot? So these things you guys do have to know. Um, again, just another way to look at it. Um, and guys, I apologize, I'll be right back. My washer is beeping and it's not going to stop beeping unless I turn it off. So I'm so sorry. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. There guys, sorry, and you probably saw my, my shorts. That's what happens when you work from home. You wear shorts. Um, okay, good question. So Mackenzie has a question here. So if, if they have a bone loss um, slash age, actually here, I'm gonna copy that question and just kind of ask people. Let's see, actually, no, maybe I don't have to. Let me see here. Actually, uh, Mackenzie, that's a great question. Just hold that thought and I'm gonna ask everybody. Oh, come on. Why does this slide, why is it blank? Okay, guys, I'm gonna ask you a quick question. Let me do this here. So what do you guys think? If, if you have, here, let me get that chart as well. Copy, okay. So I have a slide up here, everybody, if you don't mind answering for me. So if, if somebody has a bone loss um, slash age of 0 0.75, but they smoke more than a pack a day, and that's a great question, what um, grade would you put them in? And Mackenzie, you are right, by the way. I just want to see what everybody else is thinking. So if you have calculated this and it's 0 0.75, which would put them here, correct? Um, but they smoke more than a pack a day. What grade would you give them? 
and I will give you guys a second to think about it. Don't you worry. Lindsay, yes, so it's kind of tricky. Um, Stephanie, you are correct. Um, S, you are correct. Um, what do you guys think? Because this is kind of tricky. Because remember how I said you can't go below in a grade. You can always go higher, but you can't go below in a grade. I'm just waiting on a few more people. I'm just, I, because this is a good question. Uh, we do talk about them in the case studies too. So yes, it would put them in a grade C because they are smoking a lot. Um, you would not, you know, like it just sort of means that they're constantly doing something to their mouth that's going to make things worse. So things are going to progress quickly. Okay, so that's a great question. We will talk more about those. Um, and the grading, so A, B, and C, you would determine, okay, you guys, um, is it going to be a slow progression, moderate, or, you know, pretty fast? If a patient's 90 years old, and yes, they might have a higher cal, but are you worried about things progressing quickly because they're a non-smoker, they have no diabetes? Well, that's just sort of how it determines it. But you do, of course, also have to look at the bone loss and things like that. Okay, um, this is just sort of showing you guys some not so nice mouths. Obviously, these things look pretty bad and that will give them a higher grade. Um, we did do these case studies last time, like this is an older one, but let's just sort of go through them again. So you have a 50 year old patient He's experiencing a bad breath and his wife wanted him to come in. He is, he is uh, receiving treatment for high blood pressure, depression, um, smoking cessation. These are the medications he's on. Smoking one pack of cigarettes a day for 35 years. You guys, that's a long time. It's not like he just started smoking, which would be weird, but for 35 years, um, you know, his, his meds, he drinks alcohol. His last visit was over 10 years ago. He only goes when he's in pain. So you guys, hopefully you took a picture of like these things here, okay? Of the, sorry, of the staging and the grading too. This will help you determine these things, okay? So, um, so he brushes once a day, which is not enough. He doesn't really floss. Um, he has a lot of bio, or I'm sorry, he has a lot of calculus um, light biofilm though, um, which is good, I guess, but he has gingival or pff, he has generalized gingival recession, bleeding index, plaque free score. Um, this is his mouth basically. Um, just from everything I've told you guys so far, what stage and what grade are you guys thinking? Let me bring up another chart for you. So that's slide 23. I'll come back to that. Just from everything I've told you guys so far, what staging and grading are you thinking? Like just sort of off the top of your head here. Like what are you thinking? Let's do the stage first. What's, what stage just are you guys thinking? So let me go back. So think of the stage as we're going through this here. So this is the patient. He's 50, I mean, he's, he's obviously not 50. I don't know why he's there, but anyways. He's 50, um, he's on medications, he's a smoker. Um, he doesn't go to the dentist often, so those are some key points. Um, he doesn't brush a lot, he does have generalized tartar, which is moderate to heavy. His biofilm is light. So even with just that information, we haven't looked at, we haven't looked at his x-rays yet. Um, no, we haven't, we don't know his probing depths is clinical attachment loss, but let's just say we're just thinking it, you know, thinking about it. What stage are you guys thinking, even without, you know, so you should have a stage in mind, like just to sort of have a stage in mind, okay? And then moving on here, now we're looking at the clinical attachment loss, which is the bottom number here, okay? It's really hard to see, even for me, it's blurry. So the clinical attachment loss, 
here, okay? The bottom number. So look at these numbers, you guys. So clinical attachment losses of eights and sevens, I think. It's really hard to see. Eights and sevens, okay? So go back again to our favorite chart, clinical attachment losses of eights and sevens. We pick the highest number, remember? Where was that? Um, the probing depths, we have fours and fives, threes and twos, you know, all of that. So, and thank you guys for, you know, thinking about it. That is awesome. I, I will um, explain this, okay? So feel free, you guys, to type in the, ch in the um, chat box if you're thinking of something, okay? So then having a closer look, but guess what, you guys? They, he also has some furcation involvement, class three, or sorry, class two, three, two, furcation involvement, class, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. I was thinking like three, four, five. Okay, sorry, I think I'm thinking of other things. So um, class two, furcation involvement. Look, he has missing teeth, you guys. The wisdom teeth, normal to be missing, but why is he missing his sixes and sevens in some cases? It's probably not just for the heck of it. So then we have to go back again. Um, I kind of want to use this other chart right now. So staging, okay. So we look at tooth loss, we look at cal, we look at the pocket depths too, of course, but all of that. So hopefully everybody's thinking for now, stage three or four, right? You might be kind of going, oh, is it stage three? Is it stage four? Is it stage three? Is it stage four? So hopefully you're thinking about all of that. He smokes, it was a pack a day, correct? Or was it more than pack? Smoking a pack a day. So that's a grade modifier. Okay. Just move down here. These are the x-rays. Obviously, you guys, severe bone loss, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. Like, you can just see it. Um, like, I wouldn't even have to do calculations. It's kind of right there, okay? So, bone loss, vertical bite wings, bone loss, bone loss, bone loss. So, for those of you guys who have said stage four, grade C, that is correct, okay? Um, and Stephanie, yes, you are correct. So he was in stage three for the most part, but then as soon as he gets tooth loss, as soon as there's mobilities happening, then that puts him in, into a stage four, okay? And grade C, I think everybody who answered did say grade, or sorry, um, yes, grade C, because that's, you know, it's not a good sign with all of the bone loss he has, all of that. So then they put everything together for you again. So there's previous tooth loss from perio. We didn't necessarily know that, but when sixes and sevens are missing, it's kind of a good indication. If there's one six missing, it could have been a fluke where like literally they hit themselves, they had trauma. It's not usually a molar though. Um, if you see a molar missing, it's probably due to perio, um, okay, like usually. They talk about the cow, they talk about the probing depth again, um, the bite wings, obviously, and then they just talk about how they would go about cleaning this patient's teeth, okay? So good for you guys, great job, okay? So, and then they did some highlights. Oh, Mackenzie, I like that. So Mackenzie is saying, so a good way to remember if something is generalized or localized, um, if it's um, greater than 30%, it's the same as eight teeth being affected in 28 teeth in the mouth. Hmm, that's really smart. I'm gonna write that down because I really like that. So if it's greater than 30%, yes, eight teeth are affected. I will repeat that. I'm actually writing it down in a 28 mouth. Okay, so Mackenzie is saying that to remember if something is generalized or localized, she was told that for it to be greater than 30%, making it generalized, um, it's the same as more than eight teeth are affected in a 28 teeth mouth. Okay, does that make sense? That is so smart. So she's, she is um, also saying, in a case study, 
Um, if it lists a ton of different teeth that are affected, count them out and see if it's more than eight. That's awesome, Mackenzie. Thank you. I, I haven't thought about it like that. I love it. I am going to use that for my own practice. So thank you. And I'm sure everybody has had some major like, aha, that makes sense. So thank you, Mackenzie. That was great. Um, so, so um, see you guys. So there was some stage three, there was some stage four areas here. Put some into stage four just because there's more things happening in stage four, okay? So this is another, oh, sorry. Why did they put the stage and everything there? I wanna cover that up, but um, it's too late. <laughs> okay, so just to kind of think about it. So, so this is another patient, type two, diabetic. They are a smoker. She has a greater than nine level of the HbA1c. Her cal is four to five um, millimeters. The bone loss, 20%. Um, five millimeter, um, sorry, I'm talking about the probing depths here. So stage two, grade C. So I just kind of want to show you guys that for one second. Stage two, grade C. So let me tell you why. So Cal is four to five millimeters. Let's see. Okay. So when Cal is four to five millimeters, so we're kind of looking at stage two and stage three here, right? So it's kind of like, hmm. But the probing depths, I believe, my apologies, I need to go back to that again. The probing depths, I believe they said were less than or equal to five. So that's 31. So then that just puts her into stage two again, you guys. So there's more happening in stage two. Cal did say from four to five millimeters, but they still put her in stage two. So it could, and, and this is pretty much greater than five anyway. I think if it, if it was a lot of the teeth affected were five millimeter cal, then she would go into stage three, but it could have just been the one tooth or something. So that's why they're putting her into stage two and looking at the probing depth as well. Okay, so they kind of did, did both but they put her in grade C. So you might be thinking, well, stage two isn't that bad but grade C is bad and I'll tell you why. It's because remember they mentioned, where's that chart? They mentioned the diabetes, okay? So that is a grade modifier. It's more than seven, so that's grade C. So does everybody see that? The, the smoking and the diabetes. Um, Stephanie, exactly. Sorry. Yes, exactly. So that's why. Okay. Um, this is just sort of something to put everything together again for you guys. Looking at different risk factors. Look at the age. Oh boy. Things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is just sort of how you would probe around teeth with implants. Um, hmm hey, they might, uh, I think it'd be pretty cool to have like an image like this on the board exam and then you have to say which is the right one to probe implants. I don't know. That would probably be too easy, right? But it's kind of different because you kind of have to go like straight up and down for the tooth. You do have to angle it a little bit. You guys probably knew that, but I just think that's pretty cool. This is just sort of showing a different color of perio probe. I love these. They're amazing. Um, I, 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 I need to order more. I just don't know where to find them. Um, so again, you guys looking at this chart, looking at, at everything, study it, memorize it, print it out, look at it, you know, it's great. So I do have some additional case studies for you, but let me tell you, it was really hard to come up with case studies because I don't have like from actual patients. So I just kind of had to think of some and go from there. So let's see how we do. Okay. So and I kept it simple for you guys. So Marianne, she's age 78. Um, these are her vitals. She's five foot five, 165 pounds. These are her x-rays. Okay, you guys, these are the x-rays. They're not actually her x-rays. I just pick them. I try to find some, you know, pertaining to the 
particular case study. So look at the bone levels. You might not think it looks that bad in some areas, but then look at like the lower anteriors. Look at like over here where there's a little bit more. You see calculus spurs. So that can indicate, okay, it's not just little bone loss here. It might be a little bit more. So more about Marianne. This is Marianne's teeth, okay? So her lower anteriors, like moderate to heavy deposits, look at the like swollen gingiva on the bottom here. You might be looking at her from this way and saying, oh, it doesn't look too bad. You know, the gums actually look fairly healthy. Yes, you do see some staining there, but look at the moderate to heavy tartar even kind of showing up here. Um, but you can see gingival recession, so that would put her in a higher cal. Um, hope I didn't give you guys the grading yet. No, I don't think I did. So her cal is from three to nine millimeters, okay. Um, pockets, two to seven millimeters. Um, so three millimeters generalized. The molars are four to seven millimeters. So I kind of summed it down for you guys a little bit. But remember, look at the key points here. Is there furcation involvement? Sorry, maybe I shouldn't be so obvious. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm probably being too obvious, but I'm trying to help you. So you should automatically have a stage in your mind right now, okay? So let's go back to Marianne again. Um, this is Mary Ann. She's 79. This is all of the, um, the information that I have given you. I kept it simple, very, very vague. Look at her x-rays. Um, look at her teeth. Um, a couple other information here. So I didn't have like a perio chart to put things in. All of this, you guys. So you are looking, okay, so stage three, and I'll tell you guys why, okay? So this is not I'm sorry, this is not a case study that I just made up on my own. I took a course and I just changed the name. I like I changed slightly the age, things like that. Oh, um, okay, so you were probably thinking stage three or stage four, but I didn't mention anything about smoking. I didn't mention anything about diabetes um, and, and considering her age. Okay, so in the course, what they said to me was, or sorry, what they had said to everybody was she's 79 years old. In some, in some areas, she has early bone loss. In some areas, she has moderate bone loss, but she's 79 years old. She's doing pretty darn good for 79 years old. She's not missing any teeth for 79 years old. That's pretty darn good. And that's what they said in the course. They said she's not missing any teeth at 79 years of age, but there's furcation involvement. So that automatically puts her into a stage three. But then you have to think, is it a stage three or is it a stage four? So let's go back again. So a lot of you guys said stage three and a lot of you guys said, said stage four. So let's talk about it. So she's in stage three, not in stage four. Basically because in the course they had said, does Mary Ann, will complex rehabilitation be needed? Are, are there any teeth loose? No. Are there any dysfunctions in the mouth? No. Um, is she missing teeth? No. So that's what they said. Okay. That's why they said it's not stage four. It's stage, or, um, yeah, it's not stage four. It's stage three. Okay. Um, so does that make sense so far to everybody? Shoot. Where'd that go? Okay. And it would be grade B. So let's go down to the grading again. It would not be grade A just simply because she has more bone loss than that. So that puts her in grade B, or sorry, did I say A or B? It's not grade A because, hey, she's 79, you guys, but there is bone loss there and Cal. Grade B, that's because of the bone loss that she had, okay? Um, Mackenzie, that's a good question. What is a ridge defect? Can anybody tell me? Because that is a grade modifier. 
Um, uh, kind of like a stage actually. So it kind of puts things into perspective. I'm just looking for that chart. Okay, so what is a ridge defect? Can anybody tell me? So Mackenzie, you might not be the only one who doesn't know. Oops, I just put up a Facebook thing. What is a ridge defect? I'm gonna to try to find a picture for you guys. What is, does nobody know? What is a ridge defect? Stephanie, yes, you got it. Thank you. Um, I, I kind of found some pictures here, you guys. It's not super awesome, but at least I can show you guys. So a ridge defect is basically, think of your older patients and if they're missing teeth. Um, they're missing teeth, they have not cared to get a bridge or a partial denture, um, anything like that. So a ridge defect is just simply, um, can everybody see this by the way? I put up a picture. Um, I might have to refresh my screen if you can't see it. A ridge defect is kind of when the alveolar bony ridge is just not looking right. Like, I'm probably not explaining it properly, but when there's missing teeth, okay, that's why we tell patients, I know you have one missing tooth or you're 80 years old, you had just lost like three teeth this side, three teeth that side, you don't think it's gonna make a difference. Your, your face will change. That ridge is going to change. So yes, that's what it is, you guys. Thank you. But that was a great question because you obviously weren't the only one, Mackenzie, who didn't know. So thank you for asking that. Okay, so let's, let's go through another one. Okay, because <clears throat> case studies are awesome, but it was really hard for me to make these case studies. Um, or um, I should say like picking the x-rays because I took a course, I took um, the, the case studies from the course, but I just kind of changed like a couple things, but I couldn't take the pictures from the course because it was like on the screen, right? But anyways, okay. So for Joe, 68, smoker, a pack a day. So what does that mean? When he smokes, that puts him into a certain grade already. Probing, three to nine millimeters. Whoa, those are heavy pockets clinical attachment loss, anywhere from two millimeters to 12 millimeters. Holy moly, furcations, four teeth, and guess what? There's mobility. Honestly, even just looking at these x-rays, I know what stage and grade he's gonna be in, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, Mackenzie, good question, because I don't smoke either. Somebody told me that 10 cigarettes is a pack, or is it 15? Does anybody know what's in a pack of cigarettes? 10 to 15? I don't know. I think so though. That's what I've always thought. Oh, it might depend on the brand. Um, and Allie is saying 20 cigarettes. Holy cow, somebody is seriously smoking 20 cigarettes a day, even 10 cigarettes a day. How do you have time for that? Ew, that's gross. Anyway, sorry if anybody smokes here, I apologize. Um, Ali is saying that 20 is standard. Does anybody smoke here? Because I apologize for what I just said. I was being very rude. <laughs> Does anybody smoke here? I'm curious. Okay, so let's talk about Joe because he's a smoker. <laughs> Sorry if I offended anybody. I apologize. I'm so mean. Okay, so what's everybody thinking from a stage and a grade from everything I've said to you? Look at the cow, so that should put you him into a stage. Smoker, that's a certain grade. Mackenzie, good. What do you guys think? Like, what are you guys thinking? Hopefully you're thinking stage three or stage four, right? But guess what? There's mobility and there's tooth loss. Stage four, automatically, you guys, stage four. Some of you guys might have thought grade B, but it's grade C because of his major smoking, okay? And I put this here just to remind myself to say, since he's a major smoker, that puts him into a grade C. Yeah, I know. These bite wings, insane, so that's definitely more than 50%, so you know it's gonna be stage four. Hopefully you guys will have easy ones like this on the board exam, seriously. 
but is anybody confused with that? Because there's one more to go through. Okay, so I don't think anybody smokes here. That's good. If you are watching the, um, the recording, I apologize if I sounded rude. I didn't mean to do that. My bad. Okay, Lisa, type 2 diabetes, probing depths, 2 to 10 millimeters, clinical attachment levels, um, clinical attachment loss, whatever, 2 to 16 millimeters. Whoa. I don't think I've ever seen such bad clinical attachment loss. But anyways, um, mobilities of three in some areas, puffy papilla, negative recession. So that can make it a lower cal. What do you guys think? I'm not trying to confuse you, but <laughs> I know. Um, Stephanie, I was thinking the same thing, but I wasn't going to say it. Pretty much automatically put somebody into a stage. Stage four, because of the mobilities. Oh, uh, Mackenzie, good question. You know what? They didn't mention that in the course. They didn't mention anything else about the diabetes, only that she was type two. So I should have asked that. So I don't know if it's controlled or not. So I'm sorry. I don't know that. Um, I think most of you guys said stage four. In grade C, did everybody say that? Good. So what's on this next slide? I can't remember. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay. So grade B and grade C. So you know what? In the course, they did actually say that it does depend on a couple things. So let's go back to the grading here. Where's my chart? So they had actually said it does depend on a couple things. They were talking about her, um, her diabetes, and but all they said was type 2. We didn't know their HbA1c number. On the board exam, you have to know that. You have to ask the patient what that number is, and that would determine either a grade B or a grade C. So remember her here. Um, type 2, her probing depths, her clinical attachment levels, mobilities. But look, you guys, look at the bone loss. Seriously, that's ridiculous. I would put them in a grade C because of that bone loss. It's not like the bone loss is going to get better, right? Because remember for, for our grading, you know, there's a lot going on. Percentage of bone loss. Look at that. I mean, come on. Like, she's going to lose those teeth, I'm assuming. So if you're, and I, I put this in, um, in here, because if you're ever not sure, oh, is it grade B or grade C, look at the x-rays. And, you know, think about it this way. It's kind of cheating, but not really cheating. Uh, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong person. Look at the x-rays. That's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. So that puts them in grade C. Okay. So again, it was hard to do the case studies. That's why I have those ones, but it kind of gives you guys a good indication. Okay. Practice makes perfect. Um, for the grading, look at how you feel like it could progress. Even just think about bone loss. You know, if, if that's easier for you, think, okay, is, 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 is there like heavy, heavy bone loss? Then, whoa. Yes, basically. So um, Stephanie is saying for the grading, it is the prognosis. Um, I did have that in a slide somewhere. So basically how you feel the prognosis is, you know, is it good? Is it bad? Like there's not much we can do. So think about that when it comes to grading. So can everybody see this slide? It's slide 19. So think about that when it comes to grading, the prognosis. Are things going to get worse? Are they going to stay the same? Are they going to get better? But that's why you can't go back in a grading because if they have perio, they have bone loss. You can't bring the bone back. So that's kind of a good way of thinking about it. For the staging, everybody, that is looking at cal you know, pocket depth, looking at cal, looking at the bone loss, of course, but then saying, have they lost teeth? Is there frication? Is there mobility? If there's frication, automatically stage three. So, hey, to keep it even more simple for you guys, if you're like, oh my God, this is so confusing, 
read the case study. If there's furcation, you know it's at least stage three. It might be stage four or two, but at least you know it's stage three. Uh, Mackenzie, look, um, let's see. So um, say a patient has um, diabetes, but if they don't um, give their HbA1c, they might be a grade A. Yes, good point, Mackenzie. Um, Mackenzie actually saw you guys, makes a great point. I should have mentioned this. So thank you, Mackenzie. You should be doing this class today, clearly. <laughs> so for diabetes, let's see, where can I find that? If you don't know their HbA1c number, perhaps it says in the case study you don't know the number and the diabetes is controlled. Um, oh, yes, uh, Lindsay, I see that too. So does not have um, diabetes. So grade A is if they don't have diabetes. But the question for you guys is, if diabetes is controlled, in our minds, it means they're a healthy patient. Yes, they have diabetes, but if it's controlled, they're a healthy patient. Their numbers would be normal. Um, Stephanie, yes, yes, you were thinking, exactly. We treat them as a normal, healthy patient if it's controlled diabetes. But I hope on the board exam, they will give you a number because that just makes things easy. If on the board exam, all they say is the patient has controlled diabetes, think grade A, okay? They might move into grade B or grade C because of other things, like maybe they do still have severe bone loss, then they might be in grade C anyway. But don't think, oh, they have controlled diabetes. Oh, but they have diabetes, so they're automatically here or they're automatically here. No. If it's controlled diabetes, think grade A, unless they give you the HbA1c number. But remember, that doesn't just mean, okay, they're controlled, they're perfectly healthy. Maybe not. They might be a heavy smoker. Crazy, right? So then they might be in grade C anyway. So Mackenzie, thank you for bringing that up. Does that make sense, you guys? Clearly, I was talking too loud because my throat is really sore. So sorry if I was yelling at everybody. I'm not a quiet talker, especially when I talk dental. I get very excited. <laughs> <laughs> so does this help you guys? Um, I am actually probably going to upload this video on YouTube because I want other people to see it too because I feel like this was very helpful. Ah, that's smart. Um, Stephanie was saying that she was listening to a podcast that said, never treat a stranger. You want to get to know them as much as you can. Uh, which podcast? because I want to start listening to podcasts again. Yes, um, um, Allie, I am, so, I am so happy that this helped. Um, is everybody okay though? Is there? Now, how do you listen to podcasts, you guys? Like, is there an app to download, I think, right? Oh, Spotify, I have Spotify, no way. I can listen to it in the car? Ooh, because as you guys know, I'm a mobile hygienist, so I travel. I'm going to Woodstock tomorrow, and that's about an hour away from me. Oh my God. Uh-oh, maybe I should be doing podcasts then. Oh, there's podcasts about board exams? Hmm. As if I don't have enough to do. Does anybody know how to make a podcast? <laughs> Is it easy? Like I just have to download the app or something? I'll figure this out one day. <laughs> Didn't even think about that. Oh, that would be so good. Um, okay, you guys. So I hope that helps. I will actually upload this onto YouTube. You will have it inside your course as well, um, of course. I'm going to put this in our private Facebook. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is a tooth bracelet. Need a? Eh? I can give you guys the link for it if you guys want it. And if you use my promo code, you get money off. So if you guys want, I can give you the link to that. Actually, I can type it in the chat box right now. It's toothlife.ca, but make sure to enter in the promo code um, dental L. Promo code, if you guys want, I don't know. 
I like I have like three bracelets, two necklaces. I need to get earrings. Yeah. I have the watch, which is so cool. I wonder if I have it here. Sorry guys, if you guys don't want to see the watch or hear me talk about my tooth accessories, you can definitely go. <laughs> I will be uploading this later on. Um, does anybody have any questions though about our session today? Sorry guys, I can't find the watch. I probably have it in my washroom somewhere. Sometimes I put it here. But is there any questions? Everybody's okay with everything? Practice makes perfect. Just study, practice. Um, you guys will have this PowerPoint as well to go through the case studies. Just basically remember grade modifiers. Oh yes, you guys, for those of you who are taking the board exam tomorrow, good luck. Mackenzie, good luck. I know you're nervous, that's normal. Um, you know, I kind of feel like at this point, just keep reading. Um, there's nothing new I can tell you guys. I really can't. I, you know, if you guys don't know something now, I'm not saying you won't know it tomorrow, but don't stress about things you don't know. Just try to know a little bit about everything. Read your notes, do all of that. You can do this, you can do this. Believe me, I still remember like it was yesterday, me taking my board exam, but I felt so good afterwards. It was like this huge weight was lifted off of my shoulder. I had no idea if I passed or not but it just felt so good afterwards. You guys are so welcome. Anytime, I am very happy that this helped. I did upload a lot of videos on you, or I'm sorry, on our private Facebook page yesterday. Um, so definitely have a peek at that. Um, I did some medical emergencies. Uh, Cause Sonia was asking about it. I did eating disorders. Look at all of that. Uh, Mackenzie, look at that video about eating disorders because we didn't really talk about that too much. Oh, um, and sorry, I can't see who's typing because the names are cut off since I'm not sharing my screen anymore, which is weird. Um, but somebody just said they had a question about inhalers. Yes, you guys are so welcome. Um, so we recommend to rinse their mouth after using an inhaler because it could cause thrush. Yes, that's true. Is that just regarding um, corticosteroid inhalers because they suppress the immune system? Actually, it is any inhaler. The reason why we do that is because it can dry out the mouth, which can cause thrush, um, candidiasis, a fungal infection even in some cases. So you want to have the patient um, rinse with water afterwards, like just to get that out of the mouth so it doesn't cause any bad like gingival reactions or something like that. So that's a good question. Um, you know what? There are two different types actually, which you probably don't have to know for the board exam, but there's two different types of inhalers. There's a cortical steroid one that you would give, but then there's also, um, yes, one that dilates everything. So there are two different types. So you would still, um, you would still have the patient rinse with water after every inhale. Um, yes, in our private Facebook group, you guys, here, let me bring that up. I hope you guys are in it because I send emails. I put the, the link on top of your courses to make sure you guys are in it. If you're not, it could just be because when you had requested to join, you didn't answer the questions and it automatically doesn't allow you to join. So please answer the questions. I do that because I get like 20 people daily. Um, wanting to join our private group and they're not students. So it just kind of helps me wean out which ones are students or not. Um, can you guys see my screen? This is our private students of um, dental L tutoring group for you guys only. So for students only, um, the link is facebook.com slash um, um, groups slash dental L. Let me put that in the chat box for you guys if you can't see it. Um, I, I did upload a lot of videos yesterday. I'm going to do more today. Don't feel like you have to watch them if you feel like you know the topic, but it's for people who have been sending me a message saying, can you talk more about this? Can you talk more about that? My exam is like tomorrow. So see you guys. I did um, um, see 20 member requests and that is just from this morning. So make sure to answer the questions if you are a student so I can let you in. 
Um, so I did one on like special needs eating disorder. Some of these, these videos are older, but it's because the information doesn't change. Okay. And I like to focus on the harder topics for the newer ones, but I should update some of those. Granted, I should do it. HIV AIDS session. It's a good one to review because they might have a question on the board exam. You want to know it. I had uploaded a, um, a board exam boot camp um, session, which just kind of goes through questions, medical emergencies, the whole works. So definitely check that out, you guys. I'm going to upload more videos today, so not to overwhelm people, but just to really help you guys study for the exam, okay? Mackenzie, please email me tomorrow after you take the exam and let me know what you thought, okay? I really want to know. In fact, all of you guys, whoever's taking the exam tomorrow, please like even just post if you would prefer post in the Facebook group, email me, whatever. And please let us know how you felt you did. Um, let it's, you know, it is a private student group only. Let us know how you feel. Let us know what types of questions you had. Let us know. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, eh? But at least you won't have to study anymore, Mackenzie. That will feel very good. Oh, uh, Mackenzie, sorry, I still have to send you the receipt. I'm so sorry. I'm the worst person in the world. I'm writing that down. God, so forgetful lately. Doing a lot of tutoring. Oh, boy. If I forget, email me and yell at me, please. <laughs> it's okay. Somebody has to. Um, uh, Mackenzie, um, people are wondering if you're taking the exam at home. I'm not sure if you wanted to answer that or not. Yeah. Yes, she is. You guys, I think everybody is correct. I believe so. Yes. So crazy. Things have changed so much. Um, not to make you more stressed out, but that would probably stress me out more. I don't know. Like I would prefer to, I don't know. Oh, so some people have to go to a testing center in Florida. So probably if there's bigger spaces and things, then you do have to go to a testing center. Sorry, guys. Yes, the, um, the session is done. I apologize. We are going to go through any more. So if you have things to do, go right ahead. I will let you guys go because I do actually tutor in about 20 minutes. Um, so I do have to go myself anyway. I'm going to have a quick bite to eat. Piece of toast or something. <laughs> I am so happy to help you guys. Um, again, I don't want to overwhelm you guys too much, but I will be uploading a lot in our Facebook group today. Um, don't look at it if you feel you know the topic, please don't worry. But if there's any last minute questions, post in the Facebook group um, so that that way other students can see it too. I can answer them and everybody can see it because emails can be hard sometimes just because I get so many all the time that I check it like once in the afternoon, once in the evening. But if I miss your email, then I'm sorry, I do apologize. So posting in the Facebook group is usually better because others, uh, like other people probably have the same questions. In fact, maybe I'll do another YouTube video today. Since I put makeup on today and stuff, I should probably do some more videos. <laughs> Um, yes, I will be uploading this video like right now. It might take a little while to process because this was a little over an hour session, but I'm going to actually upload it right into YouTube. So I'm going to make it private or I'm sorry, public and in the Facebook group too, because, um, our sessions aren't usually public, but this one will help a lot of people, you guys. So I'm going to make it public. Any questions though, let me know in the Facebook group. I will be checking it throughout the day. A lot of tutoring today. So I apologize if I don't get back to you guys right away. But if, if a student has a question, you guys, feel free to comment. Feel free to comment and, and um, help to answer the question for them. Even if you get the wrong answer, I will say, no, this is the right answer. But it can't hurt to just try. In fact, hey, you guys, I have an idea. I have an idea. Shoot, I should have mentioned this earlier because there's only three of you left. Um, I suggest everybody post questions in the Facebook group, post questions and like A, B, C, or D, and then give everybody the, the answer, say tonight. 
I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. So that way we're just thinking of a bunch of questions, kind of like we're doing this big study group. Why not? Is that cool or not cool? Can somebody help me get that started? Just post random questions, you guys, because I feel like I can't post any more random questions because I just feel like I've said them all, but I probably haven't. Post questions. Um, I don't know if you guys want to give the answers right away in the comment section so you don't forget to give the answer, but then when somebody comments on your question, they might see the answer and you don't want that, right? So maybe if you guys don't mind just posting a question, whoops, as I almost dropped this, um, I'll post some later, okay? I'll post some later and then I'll post the answers later on tonight. Yeah? I don't know, Mackenzie, I think that's a good idea. Post questions in the Facebook group. I think that would be a lot of fun. Okay, this YouTube video is gonna be public and people are gonna think I'm crazy. <laughs> They're going to be like, we don't want to sign up for her sessions. She's making us post questions. <laughs> okay, guys, have a good day. Have a good lunch, breakfast, whatever time it is for you guys. Have a good coffee. Mackenzie, good luck. Everybody, good luck. Who's taking the exam tomorrow? Good luck, good luck, good luck. Believe me, I am going to be nervous as heck as well. I get very, very nervous for my students almost to the point where I feel sick. <laughs> so I'm seeing patients tomorrow to try to distract me. Okay, guys. Good luck, good luck, good luck, okay? Bye. I will post the video soon, 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 hopefully within the next 45 minutes. Bye, guys. Bye. See you guys later. Next week, I think I have to check the schedule, but I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh, actually, you guys, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I have something. Oh, no, I just lost everybody. I'm going to pop on again to do like a board exam question session later on tonight. Okay. I'll post it in the Facebook group. I will. Okay guys. See you soon. Bye.